Thank you, Gilbert, and thank you, everybody else, for attending this, this talk. Uh, we are baseload energy and a very exciting discovery that we made last year. And we will update you here as well on this, uh, on this journey for high-grade uranium in the Athabasca Basin area of northern Saskatchewan. So just some of the quick highlights. Accio zone, which is what we call this discovery, it is confirmed as a high-grade uranium discovery. It followed our Athabasca 2.0 exploration strategy. We are planning for a minimum of 10,000 meters diamond drilling this winter, and we just issued a news release this morning that the drills have started turning. So this is definitely an exciting time for the company as we expect a lot of good results in 10,000 meters. Myself, I've been in the industry for 16 years exploring for high-grade uranium and have been very successful in that with a number of discoveries under my belt already. We have four exciting projects within the Athabasca Basin area following our Athabasca 2.0 strategy. The uranium fundamentals are extremely strong where demand keeps increasing and the supplies keep decreasing with the the whole world crying for green energy alternatives. Well, there's nothing better than nuclear energy, which is low CO2 emitting, but it's also constant base load power. And the company is fully funded with at least $20 million in the bank. We have very tight capital share structure with about 20% controlled by insiders. What is at the basket 2.0? It's a thesis that not just myself, but a number of other people have, have also developed, but it's basically looking for near surface, basement hosted high grade uranium deposits. If you know the history of the Athabasca Basin in Northern Saskatchewan, you will know that there are a number, or I guess the, the primary exploration strategy is looking for unconformity style of deposits. You can see on the cross section on the right hand side where you have that unconformity is the boundary between sandstone, which is that basin shape, and the basement rocks beneath it. A number of discoveries are made at the unconformity and it's probably one of the best places to make a discovery. However, if you have over 100 meters of sandstone thickness on your project, there's a very good chance that you will not have a discovery that goes into production unless you have a monster of a deposit like Cigar Lake or MacArthur River. The alternative is if you can make a discovery that has less than 100 meter sandstone cover or something that is without any sandstone cover at all, similar to Cameco's Eagle Point mine, these are the type of discoveries that have traditionally gone into production. So Athabasca 2.0 is not simply a geological thesis, it is also an economic thesis. And as we've seen so far with, with our Accio discovery, it meets all of these criteria. And we're very excited to advance Accio at an accelerated pace. The image on the left-hand side is a geophysical anomaly. It measures about 1500 meters long and about 500 meters wide. Now this anomaly is split between two different companies, 92 Energy to the north and Baseload to the south. Both companies have had very early success with intersecting uranium mineralization. As I mentioned earlier, we drilled 1600 meters and made the discovery in September of last year in four drill holes. Some of the results that you can see on the, in the text, uh, our discovery drill hole, AK2101, we intersected 0.13 weight percent uranium over 15 and a half meters. And that's within, within 100 to 120 meters vertical depth from the surface. Within that intersection, we did have two intervals of high grade uranium, 1.29%, and 0.66, and I will show pictures and describe those a little bit more. We had two other drill holes that had very exciting results as well, but keep growing on, these, on this discovery. So looking at the three main intersections, you can see on the left-hand side, there are a number of smaller intersections that were made uh, telling us that this hole 
corridor is fertile for uranium mineralization. But the bulk of what we've seen so far is in this upper zone. Now, the upper zone is currently 90 to 125 meters below surface. There's only about 25 to 30 meters of sandstone cover, if any, within the area. So this all fits with Athabasca 2.0 depths, with, with historic mining depths, open pitable depths. Each, each of the intersections, or I guess the, the width that we currently see of these intersections measures about 45 meters wide. And you can see that it is open up dip and down dip as well. Two of the, two of the drill holes intersected high grade uranium, which we consider to be anything over 0.5% U308. And we're not just open up dip or down dip, but we're also open along strike to the north and the south. This is what the discovery drill hole looks like. Clay alteration, which all the white and the gray that you see. Hematization, which is all the red and the yellow that you see. Now, my experience working on uranium deposits in the Athabasca, I can take this core and I can put it into other basement hosted deposits and you'd never know the difference between them. So right away, that speaks to me that we're seeing the right types of alteration. We're seeing, we're seeing high grade mineralization. We're seeing significant mineralization. And it's the whole system itself is a very large ge hydrothermal alteration system. So we know that the plumbing system is there. The fluids have come through. The fluids have carried uranium. And we think that there's more. This is one of the largest alteration systems that I have ever seen in my career. And this is why I'm very excited about this project, because I think it has a lot more to give than what we have seen so far. This is what our high-grade uranium looks like. This is 1%, over 1% uranium. You can see the black nodules in there. That's uranium. When you see it in drill core, especially on discovery hole, I think it's, I think it's fair to say that there is more down in the ground. We just need the drill to, to discover more for us. Again, more high-grade uranium from the discovery hole. But what I really like about this picture is obviously mineralization, which is the black in the, in the picture, but it's everything around it, especially the, the pink and the white, the carbonate and quartz veins that you can see here. So on the discovery drill hole that we had drilled for NextGen's aero deposit, the first zone of mineralization, which is very comparable in grades and width to what we've seen so far, had very similar style of, of veining. And so what this kind of indicates to me is that we could be intersecting the uppermost part or, or slightly distal part to the mineralization. And there could be a good chunk of high-grade uranium, hopefully similar to Arrow's A2 zone, not too far from where we are. And hopefully within 10,000 meters, we can make that discovery if it exists. Now, I did mention earlier that the unconformity is the typical place where you do find mineralization. However, if you have over 100 meters sandstone thickness, that's not a good scenario. Fortunately for us, we've got about 25 to 30 meters of sandstone thickness, which, and the unconformity is about 50 meters from the surface. So what this, what the sandstone on Accio provides us with is an additional area for exploration that we can potentially discover unconformity style of mineral, mineralization. What that does for us is not only would we have mineralization closer to surface, but unconformity style of mineralization is typically higher grade. So we think there's a lot of great potential here that not only can we find mineralization in the basement rocks as we've done already, but also at that unconformity. Infrastructure, we're close to a couple of mills, especially the Key Lake Mill. We're only about 70 kilometers northeast of Key Lake. We're about 30 kilometers east of a hull road that supports the MacArthur River Mine and the Key Lake Mill. The old Key Lake Hull Road passes right through the project, so there's an alternative to use that as well. And the old Key Lake Road did, did accommodate some trucks. In our exploration program last year, 2021, about 20% of our exploration budget 
went directly into indigenous owned businesses and employees. And moving forward with the company, we do believe that this number will continue to increase as well. So quickly getting towards the end here, just some of our other projects as Accio is our flagship at the moment, as we do have a discovery and plan to drill quite a bit more on there. We've also got the shadow project and the catharsis project, which are quite a ways away from the, from the basin itself. But we think that there's quite a lot of potential that does exist. There. Catharsis, for example, it is a large project and we recently add more ground to it in which on the Eastern side of the project, there are high grade outcrops. You can see some of the grades in which back in the late 1970s, uh, the prospectors had taken boulder samples and chip samples and did come up with some pretty high grades. Our plan is to get out there this summer, reevaluate some of these, but the key takeaways, when you look at the geophysics, this is a trend. And believe it or not, I can follow that trend up to Accio. So we think this is a fertile corridor for uranium mineralization, especially high-grade uranium. We do plan to drill the project with about 2,500 to 5,000 meters of diamond drill. Our shadow project, which was the first project that we staked, very encouraged by it. We think it's an amazing project with a lot of potential. Uh, there are a number of shear zones that we can identify with the with airborne geophysics that we think have a lot of similarities to other known high-grade uranium deposits in the Athabasca Basin. So a lot of similarities, but we still need to do some additional work on the project. Right now, the project is currently in a little bit of a a uh, hold situation in that we are continuing consultation with the indigenous in the area. We have no time frame for when uh, when consultation will will have achieved its desired effects or when we will be able to start exploring on shadow again, which we do maintain that uh, talks have been very positive and we think that it will be uh, all resolved within the near term. So to wrap up our plans for this year, 10,000 meters of diamond drilling on Accio this winter. We've just built a camp, we've just started diamond drilling. Going into Q2, Q3 of this year, we're looking at a minimum 10,000 meters, but that drill program can go up to 30,000 meters, depending on the results from this winter. We also want to explore the remainder of the hook project, so 2,500 meters have been earmarked for that, as well as catharsis. Uh, 25 to 500,000 meters for Tharsis. We are looking at flying some airborne geophysical surveys over a number of our projects. But again, the, the big push being Accio. If we can identify pounds in the ground, and if we can complete a NI43-101 mineral resource starting by the end of this year, that provides baseload with the, the right, uh, I guess the right metrics to not only be viewed positively by the market, but to have pounds in the ground that people can attribute value to. And we think this will separate us from a number of our peers and not only be seen as a simple explorer. Depending on a size of a resource, we also think that Accio has the potential to become a near-term producer. But again, that all remains to be seen and right now is simply uh, a theater theoretical concept. About 77 million shares outstanding, 110 million shares fully diluted. Share price is a little bit old on this, in this example, or on this slide. Uh, right now we're at about 70 cents. So right now the share price is at pre-discovery levels really. This is an opportune buying situation that we think uh, investors can really do well on, especially if we're seeing a lot of success in, in our drill program. We think that we can hit the, the same prices that we saw after we released our results. It's all a matter of time and hopefully the, the right mineralization is in the ground. And again, we've got 20 million in the bank. So we are very fully funded to see all of our projects explored appropriately this year. Myself and my VP exploration, Cameron McKay, we've got a lot of experience within the industry and 
baseload is part of the or group of companies we've got a lot of a lot of support it's a great outfit the or group a lot of a lot of technical and financial expertise within within the group and so everybody combined this makes for one of the most exciting uranium explorers that there is uranium bull market prices will go up demand is there this is our team Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Uh, so just a few questions here. The first one coming from Robson. So maybe you can comment a bit on the uranium market, the spot price. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? I think the spot price has to go up right now. It's at a very comfortable position. Uh, whether or not we'll see the same results as, as back in 2005 to 2007, where it peaked at about $140, $150 per pound. But it has come off quite a bit off its off its doldrums over the past decade when it was floating around $20 a pound or less. So with the resurgence of uranium, current spot price around $45 a pound to incentivize a lot of a lot of uranium production globally, we need to see those we need to see that price come up quite a bit to at least $60 a pound and maybe even higher, especially if you consider inflation, it could be between 60 to $80. So as the price of uranium, as the spot price of uranium continues to rise, as will all the uranium, uh, uranium companies within the, within the market, all the players. I also note that Cameco on their Q4 call mentioned they had 70 million pounds of long-term contracts now. That in itself will also incentivize the spot price, or at least should. Yeah, the next one coming from Donnie. You say, do you think that uranium can ever consider as a green technology? I think that referring to maybe nuclear energy, does it ever uh, consider as a green energy? What, what's your thought on that one? I think it's already considered as a green energy. Right now, it is the one of the lowest CO2 emitting energy sources out there. When you consider baseload power in itself, there's nothing that has the output, the longevity, and just the, the constant energy that, that you can have from nuclear energy with no CO2 emissions. It's, it's already a green technology. The final question coming from Shamel, he's asking you what opportunities or maybe I call it effects during COVID for the future of the AF, uh, developing in Athabascan basins here? We've taken all of the necessary COVID protocols and you know, I like to report that all of our crews since COVID has started have, have had no COVID issues on our sites. We've done a very good job of maintaining uh, negative test results before people come to site. And we continue to, to work this way in that COVID should not affect our operations, uh, our explorations moving forward. Thank you, James, for the time here today. I'll let you go. And uh, thank you again for sharing your interesting story on uranium. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, everybody else.